Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we have installed and started our first React application. And today, in this one, we will talk about JSX. So, what is JSX? JSX is an XML-like syntax extension for React and stands for JavaScript XML. It basically means that we can combine HTML and JavaScript in the same file together and this can be a little bit confusing for beginners because people get used to separate HTML and JavaScript in different files and now writing them together can be difficult at the beginning but that's okay, trust me, you will get used to it after you start uh, writing JSX uh, Many people are asking whether we need to use JSX or not while developing React applications The answer is no, we don't have to use JSX but it's strongly recommended because it makes a lot easier to develop React applications uh, if we use JSX. And if you have some experience in front-end development, you will get it quickly. Well, another point is that also browsers don't understand JSX code, so it gets translated into JavaScript with Bubble. JSX also has its own syntax rules. For example, HTML attributes like class becomes class name in JSX and some other properties like onclick or tab index needs to be written in camel case like in the example below and finally all tags all HTML tags must be closed now let's jump into code and see how to use them so we are back on our project's source code and here you can see an example of the JSX syntax but how would this code look like if it wasn't written with JSX Let's copy this code and there is a website that Bubble transpiles JSX into JavaScript. So I pass the code here and it gives us back on the right side the JavaScript version. These two codes do the same thing and the code on the right side, as we can see, uh, seems much more complex and difficult to read. On the other hand, JSX looks really clean and easier to read like HTML. So that's why the standard is using JSX while building React applications. But I still would like to explain what this means here because you will have a better understanding later. So let's clean this part and start with an empty div. Now React provides a create element function and here it takes some arguments. The first one is the name of the tag. And the second one is its attributes. For example, I give here a class name and its name. So now it replaces with an object. Furthermore, I can write here a text, hello world. And this adds an additional argument as a string here, hello world. And finally, if I give a parent tag like p, this will create a child element inside the parent element, again with the create uh, element function. So if I go back to the text at the beginning, it really gets quickly complicated, as we can see. But actually they do the same thing. So let's copy both of them in our project and we will see the same output. So I copy this code here. And this should give us back the hello world text. And we should also see the same result when I copy this one and this should also give us the same output as we can see it renders again and there is no change it's the same output finally I would like to show a common mistake developers do now as you know from JavaScript the return keyword can only return a single element at once and as we can see each tag is now a React element, so that's why we can only return an element at once. Sometimes we would like to write two tag names like we do in HTML, and if we do that, we see an error. And if I hover here, VS Code shows us what the error exactly is that JSX expressions must only have one parent element. So, as a solution, we can wrap our HTML elements in one single parent and that should work fine. 
Now, as we can see, our function returns only one parent element with its both of the children, and that works fine. Next, we will move on with React components, so don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, comment down below. Otherwise, see you in the next video, and thank you for watching.